The Ancient Hebrew Wedding, Part 3, The Pattern and Blueprint to Build the Meta Bride and Wife. This will be a long teaching. It needs to be contiguous. If you need to pause it at any point to get some tea, coffee, water, or a break of any sort, please do. In order to get the most out of this teaching, as it builds upon itself, it would be helpful to complete it in one setting. I also might say that this may be a little bit more difficult for some of you who have not watched the other teaching series, The Letters of the Deep, as we will be discussing morphology of the Hebrew root to the form seen in scripture as it appears. All changes from the original root have a meta meaning, and it does apply to the bride and wife to be. After sharing in part one and two about the foundational principles of covenant that successively build upon one another, we finished by saying that we would share the importance of the mark of the covenants of both mother and father. I also stated that this was a pattern based off of the Ark of the Covenant. I want to show you something. Let's look at this word, Tabnif. Strong's number 8403 is from Bana, and it means structure, by implication, a model, resemblance, construction, pattern, figure. The first time that Tabneth is used is in Exodus chapter 25, verse 9, which says, According to all that I show you, the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of of all its furnishings, just so you shall make. This verse in of itself really should be looked at closely, and I probably will be doing a teaching on it in the future. But for now, we are going to look at this specific word, Tavnith. This is the pattern of the tabernacle and all of its furnishings, including that of the Ark of the Covenant. The root of Tavnith is Bana. This is a primitive root that means to build, literally and figuratively. From the root word, we see that the hay has been removed, and then the tav on the prefix and the yod tav on the suffix has been added. This root which is the heart of the Father and relates to our heart and center, is a word that is static. It's full of potentiality, but it must be activated, acted upon. It will only be acted upon if the Spirit reveals it to us. In this root word, bana, we see the Hebrew word, ben. This Hebrew word means son. The letter He in Paleo-Hebrew means behold, revelation. So this can be simply stated that this word means behold, the son who has revelation. Revelation can only be ascertained by spirit, which is, a, is represented in Hebrew by the letter Aleph, which is the breath in, versus the He, which is the breath out. Aleph is, all, is also connected to the spirit-filled teachers. For more information regarding the letter Aleph, you may want to watch the series The Letters of the Deep for a fuller explanation. Without spirit, you cannot connect to mother and father's teaching. Mother and father cannot teach without the spirit. In training up a child, the letter He Revelation must come first, revealed by the Spirit, as the Spirit uses teachers to assist before a child can connect to the fullness of the revelation. Once comprehended through activation and then by becoming it, they receive the mark, that is the sign of completion, 
that they are ready to move on. I do have a point in sharing all of this. It may seem like we're going on a rabbit trail, but there is a purpose. In Hebrew, son is ben. Daughter is bot. Do you remember when we discussed about the bar mitzvah and the bat mitzvah? This was the age of accountability, the sons and the daughters of the commandments that are now ready to be wed, ready to be wed as they had passed mother's teachings. Both bar and bot contain the same root of bena. Bar is used instead of ben, which also means a son, but it carries a little bit of a different meaning in that it means an heir apparent to the throne. It does have the same root. The word bar will be important later, so don't forget that because I will bring that forward, forward again. I want you to think of this as a metaphor regarding our spiritual growth. As humans, we contain both masculine and feminine traits. Women who are estrogen dominant still produce some testosterone, and men who are testosterone dominant still produce some estrogen. Spiritually, we can see this translated as the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Physically, we can see this in the two hemispheres of our brain. Left is the logic processing side, masculine, and the right is the emotional processing side, feminine. They must be in balance. The Hebrew language also has this pattern. When we first start with mother's teaching, we must approach it logically, which is linear, bana. This develops the divine masculine, which is concerned with taking you from point to point to solve whatever issues are being tackled. This applies spiritually. The letters must be learned in order through a logical, sequential, and linear fashion, which is our spiritual story of development that unfolds to us one letter at a time. Hence, we see this in the static form of Bana, the sun, linear, that has revelation. Then we move to Bat, daughter. It has the same root of Bana. If you watch the letters of the deep, you know that when the letter Nun is removed, from the root of the word, from bana to bat, then we are dealing only with a spiritual principle not pertaining to the flesh or material world. When the noon changes from a fallen sofit, as we see in the word ben, to a risen position, this tells us that one has chosen the spiritual path instead of a material-based path. I know that this is a lot of information, but let your spirit speak to you here. I hope that you don't get frustrated with the details, as I promise they will come. I'm actually more concerned about establishing a principle as a picture and a vision rather than the minutiae at this point. Back to the root, bana, through metaology. We're going to break this down for you. This is the potential. To build your tem temple, your spiritual temple, as family through covenant, is done within by making spiritual choices. A son that chooses the spiritual path will receive revelation in how to become one, sealed as the family of God. Those who have been taught and now therefore teach are yoked and tamed having the thousandfold anointing to speak with authority, revelatory words. This process is initially done through logical linear thinking. L 
learning the letters in succession, one at a time, the aleph through the top. This is the blueprint, the pattern, to beginning our spiritual journey, which is linear in the beginning, in order to strengthen the divine masculine through Mother's teaching. Once that has been completed, then the work of the divine feminine begins. Now looking at Bot, since the noon is removed, morphing its word into Bot, daughter, then we know that this teaching pertains to spirituality concepts only. Father's teaching is all spiritual. Now, having the Tav added, we have the Father's mark and sign of his covenant. Once this is completed, the daughter is now the bride ready to be married. The very first time that the word daughter is used, it is written this way. In Genesis 5.4, we can see it used there. The first time that the word is ever used in scripture, it is called the law of first mention, and it establishes how this word will be used throughout the scriptures. This formation and morphology is seen in 17 different verses, and more than half of the verses that contain the word daughter in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, have the noon added back in. This first appearance of daughter still contains the word ben, son, within it. But instead of the fallen noon, a noon so feet, it is in the risen form. So from the root of daughter, bana, we have the noon added back in, which is the spiritual path in our activity of life. So what this is telling us is that the Father's teaching is completely spiritual in nature, but it must be walked out in the activity of life by what we do through choosing the spiritual path during our earthly walk. I hope that makes sense. Then we also see the Vav Tav being added. The Vav it means to be humble and meek, and it is connected, since the Vav means to connect as a nail or a tent peg, it is connected to the mark and the sign of the Father's covenant. So hopefully this isn't too confusing, but a daughter, Ubenot, is also a son, having both linear and and spiral processing and relating, now balanced, the two in one, yin and yang, male and female. Orders of teaching, in the process of becoming, from the static root of potentiality, from the word bana. I do want to add something here that wasn't in my notes. In Genesis, it says that he created them male and female in the beginning. And then later we read that he pulled Eve out of Adam. I'm suggesting to you that when we were created, we were created as a balance between the divine feminine and the divine masculine within, in this word, as built as Ubenot, a son who is a daughter. Sela, you might want to think about that. It was just something that came to me. You're probably asking where I'm going with this. The whole process of becoming takes us metaphorically from sons to daughters. So from Bana, the root, we can see the transition in Tavnith. Remember that this word Tavnith is a pattern and a blueprint in order to build. When we look at tab neath, found between the both of the added tabs, we see benai, 
Notice how the hay has been removed from Bana, and now the yod tav has been added in its place to the suffix side. The three symbols that come together here form the word which means my son. Should be noted that the yod is a powerful letter as it is connected to vision. It means the hand that receives the vision, which is the power, means, and direction to go through the door of revelation in order to deliver you. As the yod in this case, is on the suffix side pertaining to Father and his teaching. The Son has now been empowered to receive the Father's teaching to do something with it by going through that door of revelation of the Father as one who was already delivered of the beast ego nature as the bride, so now to be given over as one who will be marked by the Father to become the wife. I'm going to restate this just a little bit differently. After having gone through the process as a son, having chosen the spiritual path, the teachings of mother, which are logical and linear, this empowered them to be ready to receive the father's teachings. The mother imparted the vision, so the metaphorical son, who is linear in thinking, will desire to learn the Father's teaching in order to bring balance with the circular and spiral teaching, that of the Divine Feminine. But, to bring balance between the two. This is the Divine Wedding spoken of in Scripture, of the Sacred Masculine and the Feminine into becoming one. After successfully completing Mother's teaching, she marks you with her sign of the covenant to confirm this change in status and gives the, her son away over to the father, where he becomes a daughter, the bride. After completing the father's teaching, he marks you with the sign of his covenant to confirm this change in status and gives the bride away to the spouse at the wedding, now becoming as wife through the Aleph Tav, the letters of becoming, the letters of the deep spiritual revealing, the spiritual divine and sacred wedding. Now you are ready to get married in the flesh as you have become one within yourself, no longer divided, but whole single-minded, one with the Heavenly Father and Source, balanced. In the process of an earthly terrestrial wedding, each person, as one in the Spirit, unites as two in the flesh, so as to become one in the Spirit. A marriage that is, is one with the Heavenly Father, this is how you build a marriage that will last. What God has joined together, let no man separate. They are something new as one, so they cannot be separated. They are connected by the Vav, which connects the two Yods, the two visions, now as one. I am hoping that that made some sense. My fear is that it was a little clear like mud, but it is an important concept for us to consider with our earthly marriages. If we can find that balance within ourselves before committing to a terrestrial earthly marriage, we have a greater chance of having it to be successful because when both individuals are balanced and whole, having the same unified teachings that they can then carry on together by studying together, this is the process where they become equally yoked and become one. If you haven't taken a break yet, I might suggest this is a great stopping point because I know I need a break. That was a lot of information shared. I actually felt like it was starting to fall out of my head, so I'm sure that that was happening to you as well. 
We do have a little bit more to go regarding Tavneet. Selah, though, pause and think about what was shared. See if it speaks to you personally. And after you've stretched your legs and had something to drink, we will resume. But for now, Shalom, Shalom. <laughs>